Hello students, I was actually going to talk about computer memory that is the main memory of the computer and also the secondary memory of the computer which is your hard disk. But before talking about main memory or the secondary memory, I thought it is good if the students understand why does the computer require the main memory as well as the secondary memory input devices and output devices. Around the year 1943 to 45, a great scientist by name Von Neumann proposed an architecture of a digital electronic computer. In the digital electronic computer, he proposed the following way that this particular computer should work. In that architecture of a electronic digital computer, there were a few important ideas that need to be explained. The first idea was that the computer or the electronic computer he was talking shall have a central processing unit composing of the control unit and the arithmetic logic unit along with certain internal memory for usage by the ALU as well as the control unit. That's number one. Second aspect he said is the control unit is going to contain two special kinds of places or something called as registers. Registers you can think of small places to hold data or instructions. Very very small places to hold data or instructions. So this control unit had those small places called as registers which could hold instructions or data as well as they could have something called as the program counter. I'll let you know what is this instructions. Instruction register contains the instruction the computer program has given it. For example, subtract A from B. So this is an instruction. This fellow is going to be in the instruction register. Now what is the program counter? A program is nothing but it's a series of instructions. Now suppose take a look at this like this. Suppose this is instruction 1, this is instruction 2, this is instruction 3, this is instruction 4. So this fellow program counter will keep track of which instruction the CPU is currently executing. That's all the job of the program counter is. Later on as you go into higher semesters you will study a lot more of it but right now program counter simply keeps track of the address of the current instruction that is being executed. Now once the CPU was done describing by Von Neumann he went about talking about the main memory. In his model what he said that you should design an electronic computer in such a way that the electron sorry the instructions and data should reside in the main memory also called as random access memory. The reason there it, the main memory is called random access is sequential means one after the other. Random means I can directly or in a shortcut way go to that particular data or instructions. So main memory was used to store data or instructions. And in our next few lectures, we are basically going to talk about main memory and as well as the secondary memory. Now what Von Neumann said is, not everything can be in the main memory because when the power is switched off, all instructions and data are going to be lost from the main memory. So what he suggested is that, it shall have an external memory which does not lose its contents even if the power is switched off. So that in your modern computers happens to be your hard disk that is known as the mass storage or the secondary device. Finally, he spoke about giving input through the input devices and getting output from the output devices. Now, the most important part about this Von Neumann architecture is it is a very historically important design 
because this forms the basis for most of the modern computers. There is another architecture called as the Harvard architecture. If you are interested, go and take a look at it. The PCs we are going to work are mostly going to be based on the von Neumann architecture. The Harvard architecture is mostly used in embedded systems in things like washing machines, smartphones, smart electronics in cars and so on. This von Neumann architecture is also known as the stored program digital computer model because both the program and the instructions need to be stored in the main memory or RAM of the computer okay, before the instructions can be read and processed by the CPU to achieve whatever the task a user has given. So I hope this clarifies why the modern computer has the following components. The reason for having the following components is thanks to this gentleman called as von Neumann. But the idea is not considered to be an original idea of von Neumann but by another gentleman by name a brilliant scientist called Alan Turing. Alan Turing around 36-37 during his PhD had proposed something very close to it but the idea somehow was more made popular by this gentleman called as von Neumann. That's the reason you have the modern model or the architecture of a computer following this particular part. So that's why when you're going to study in the higher semesters, you're going to study about each of this in very much detail. It may be an operating system, it may be in computer architecture subject. So entire computer architecture, in fact, in the fourth semester is all going to be about these particular things in very much detail. For now, this is good enough because it gives you an idea of what is the von Neumann architecture of a computer and also why do we require main memory for a computer.